Namathuratanatayasa May I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening everyone. So today is Monday the 3rd of uh, May. 2021 and this is Sachan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center, Aberdeen, Scotland. So as usual, I'm here with you all tonight again. Good evening. Good evening, Margaret. Good evening, Colleen. It's a cold today. The whole day miserable and... Uh, and this evening was a little rain, uh, rain started around 4 o'clock and windy. Hello, good evening Colin, I hope you're keeping well. Hello Margaret, uh, this is a, a lovely day uh, with the uh, rain. Uh. Hi everyone. So, today is Monday. In the past, Monday is one of the hardest days for all of us, particularly those who are working in the offices. You may have seen so many pictures and cartoons that Monday morning everybody will be grumpy and don't, everybody will be suffering. Uh, good evening, Yvonne. Uh, oh, so Margaret is gardening and can't get warm again. It will come. Yeah, it will come. No need to hurry, Margaret. <laughs> mm. So rain is there. Yeah, so you know, in the past, before the COVID-19, we know that people will be grumpy on the Monday morning and didn't want to go to work. Uh, and then um, the, their face will be very uh, grumpy face, sad face. And, uh, and then gradually, okay, this is a job, this is a duty that one has to do. Otherwise... There will be no food on a plate, otherwise there will be no money coming in to pay a mortgage, uh, uh, school fees and so and so. So make up a mind and we'll go to work. And gradually it's become a custom and uh, one day after another we'll feel better and better and it comes by the time about Thursday or Friday you feel going into the system and suddenly it's become a weekend a friday weekend and looking forward to the two days of a rest and so that's why i have been told that during the weekends achan you should not ring anyone until 10 o'clock and even i was told not to make any sounds outside of the building that somebody may sleeping and will complain of the sound that oh I'm still sleeping why you are making a sounds like that I hope our neighbor uh, Yvonne will not mind <laughs> that we have done so many times waking her up for tea coffee <laughs> So this is a nature uh, that we are all in. And uh, th what I have n noticed uh, that other day when we were working, uh, we went to, um, went for a walk and on the way back, we came back a little early. So we arrived at the time about before the seven o'clock, uh, uh, before seven o'clock. And then we, because of the tiredness, we just wanted to have a small, chanting and have a rest and because this uh, uh, the routine has been broke it felt very awkward feel very uncomfortable uh, and uh, 
was reflecting that how much our mind conditions over the period of a time. Yeah, although the monks are noisy, but they are very kind. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Uh, monks are very lovely too, okay? <laughs> so yeah, that's just a, I was reflecting that how much we condition ourselves in our day-to-day -day life. And things that we do regularly, that changes the patterns of our thoughts and the patterns of our minds. And that also shapes our perception and shapes the whole world. There are things that we never done before, and if we are doing constantly, then gradually it changes, and our perception will be changed too. The way we look at the world will change too. The way we perceive things will change too. So whole concept will be changed on the basis of how we look at it and how we have changed ourselves. Thank you, Yvonne. Mm. Monks are lovely. See, I told you. <laughs> yeah. So over the period of a time, we simply change ourselves. So that's why a Buddha's teachings is actually, it's about changing ourselves our habit patterns, our behavior, our temperament, from bad to good, from unwholesome to wholesomeness. And obviously it takes time and it takes very difficulty. And it takes a lot of energy to change ourselves. And if you remember previously, I have been talking that there is a neuroscientist uh, research papers going on saying or psychological papers as well saying that if you want to change your habit patterns do things by not forcing but do things with your intention and having a great attention to that work and continue doing it regardless of what situation you are in for 21 days then automatically that affects your thought processes your understanding will be effect too and your perception to the life will change the matter is continuity of doing that same thing after 21 days will be the hardest part and which i have seen to myself too when i was a young man i had a different thoughts and i had a different perceptions about the world and a different understanding about the world and what, what I want it to be. And yet, with over the period of a time becoming a monk and a working in the monasteries, uh, studying and practice and a meditation, it's like the whole things are embedded in my blood now, in my DNA whether I like it or not. Sometimes I do look at my own thoughts and what I'm thinking and what I'm about to say. Uh, often I feel like, oh, this is from the Buddhist perspective. Oh, this is what the Buddha said. Oh, uh, that doesn't mean that I am trying to introduce Buddha's teachings or am I trying to uh, kind of indoctrinating other people, those who are listening to me. Hello, Anish from Thailand, Simone from Italy. I hope that you're all keeping well. Particularly in Thailand, I heard that the, uh, the number of uh, coronavirus increasing so fast. Uh, keep safe and take care, Anish. Our thoughts are with you. And meanwhile, do not come here. We do not accept you. <laughs> we do not welcome you at this time. <laughs> Try not to come, okay? <laughs> yeah. So this is a pattern that we, you know, the changes. Yeah? <laughs> Everyone is laughing now. <laughs> yeah. So this is all based on, and, uh, and then this, uh, because I have been trained or I have been with this, all the time, 
all the time, 24 seven days. And sometimes whether I like it or not, I have to be there for other people, you know, and then presenting myself as a Buddhist monk, uh, performing a ceremonies and giving a guidance and a counseling. With that, the whole environment been created in such a way that I have been kind of, you know, overpowered or overcome by the teachings of the Buddha. And with that, often time when I am trying to speak with somebody or trying to uh, analyze and give information, often time I feel like, oh, I am putting my thought uh, on from the Buddhist perspectives. And with that, the moment when I've been forming those reasons and uh, uh, the thoughts, I was able to catch it and then I pause myself. Often time I do not say anything, I leave it. And but meanwhile, uh, pretty often I do speak out as well. With a consciously aware that what I am saying is again, is uh, based on what I have been through, what I have been studying, and what I understood from one perspectives. Okay, remember this sentence from one perspectives. And that perspectives again from the Buddhist perspectives. And that Buddhist perspective again you know, uh, distilled from my perspective. So although it's coming from the Buddhist perspective, my perspectives on the understanding of that Buddhist concept uh, still may not be the right. So with that, uh, it just conditioned myself in that conditioning uh, concept. And that's why I always try to remain silent or speak less and uh, listen more. Uh, and w I try to watch myself that what am I thinking and what am I trying to convey the message. Even like this afternoon before the rain, I was uh, spread, spreading the uh, sands along the uh, slabs, which was just cleaned, and those holes. And, and then uh, I had a fear that if we do not cover it early, the, or the grasses will grow. So that's why I was putting the uh, sands along those uh, gaps with a mindful and awareness and uh, putting it and uh, pushing it. And every time when I was doing, and I was trying to observe my thoughts, and I realized that there are so many thoughts emerging one after another. And there was one particular thought arised in me that was that when you are doing a job, you have to be enjoying working with that job. And when you are working with that job, then that gives you happiness and bliss. And that again, the pushing or this uh, uh, um, using those tools to put the sand along the gravels, uh, on, along these gaps, again, I've been contemplating on what I have seen from uh, the YouTubes and what I have done in the past. So I was bringing that perception of how to be done and doing it. And it reminded me, connecting to the flight attendants, that why they have to demonstrate these safety measures every single time when they are going to uh, fly. You may have noticed, every single time, doesn't matter how many times you, got, uh, you, you are on board on a flight, the flight attendants will always instruct or give you information about safety measures and how to put the things and how to run away and what should be done. And that's simply because it's conditioning us so that we will not be panicked when the exact if it happens, hope not, uh, if it happens, then we will have a memory that it conditions us to remember that what needs to be done. And in that moment, because our mind has been conditioned to be able to remember those activities, despite the panic moment, the mind automatically able to function and remembers the actions needs to be taken. And that's how we will be able to take the action so that there won't be any trouble. So that's why our mind is so 
uh, no, a delicate that it always shapes uh, and it always changes so that's why the neuroscience um, uh, neuroplasticity scholars have been studying that of how this neuroplasticity in our brain develops and breaks and these development again are based on our attitude our behavior our understanding and how we work with so the, the more we become a positive the neuroplasticity just develops and connects into from one to another and how it's become uh, conditioned to developing the the way we have been uh, on a trying to develop our uh, understanding and our our skills and I'm pretty sure that you know out of 90 you know uh, out of 100 probably 90 over pe a person a percentage will be uh, uh, will have a different career than what they try or what they thought of it's changed over the period of a time due to the situation due to the conditions and due to uh, the the um the environment that you are in our mindset changed in that way and gradually we will be adapting a new forms and new norms and then we will feel okay with that and our mind also absorbs and adapts in those situations so-called new norms and which we hear a lot nowadays that how can we adapt ourselves into this no new norms and if you notice yourself from the previous li previous uh, year uh, let's say from the uh, no, early uh, 2020 now 2021 you may have seen that how much you have adapted into this so-called new norm without knowing what is new norms but you have already adapted to this new system new ways of a living such as ordering things online and somebody is delivering you um, and they're not going out and enjoying uh, the moments in the house and trying to communicate with the different ways and different forms and furthermore one of the famous and one of the relevant modernity that has taken over during this time and become a new norm is using the internet technology devices so that's again gradually our mind has been sifting towards this new norm and without knowing by the time when we become so used to with it and suddenly we realize oh this is a normal that there is no new norms it's just a normal behavior it's just a normal activity that we have been doing and we will be continue doing and in the meanwhile it's also been you know taken as a challenge taken as an opportunity you know, and also you know a skill that one is trying to develop you know it's like uh, when human beings are challenged uh, for certain things then all the neurons and all the abilities just emerge and just develops from your your mind and heart and that simply happened over the period of a time and that's why our mind is so good at adapting and adjusting and also merging into merging into these new things at all the time but having said that, it doesn't mean that there are certain people and certain communities found very difficult to accept the new places or new things and the new, com uh, new, new conditions. Uh, such as, a classical example is whenever our Thai members, Thai people, go to any other countries, they found very difficult to eat any other foods apart from Thai food. Even going to pilgrimage, I have seen when I was on a pilgrimage with uh, uh, the, my boss full uh, um, uh, Thai members, Thai devotees, then they always make Thai food. They can't bear any other food. So it's another one difficulties for the Thai members to travel to other places.
when they can't bear with any other food, even they will just rely on uh, the packet noodles that they normally take with them and the pickles they will take with them just to satisfy their tongue, which is not healthy for the longer period of time uh, going into different places. Uh, but that's a uniqueness. Yeah. A similar way, and, uh, and uh, I have seen that Indian community and Sri Lankan communities and Burmese communities have also difficulties adapting with uh, new you know, uh, culture and new uh, foods, uh, and particularly new food, which I found quite strange. And for me, it's easy. Yeah, wherever, whatever food, as long as it's in front of my uh, face and it's on my plate, I am happy. <laughs> when there is no food, then I'm not happy, okay? <laughs> I know, Anish, yeah, you are right. Uh, Tarada, I think Tarada from uh, Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Iwan, you are as well. Okay, so you need a Scottish or a British dish. Yeah? Not too spicy. Okay. Again, in terms of the spice eating, our, uh, initially we won't be able to eat it, but over the period of a time, we simply adapt uh, an ability to eat that spice. Uh, and uh, gradually we become uh, 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 normal with that. Yeah? And uh, Yvonne is saying that I, I can eat anything. Uh, well, I, I assume that there are something which is little spicy, like Margaret, Yvonne also can't eat. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's an adaptation and a learning uh, that our mind is so good at. It. And it's all a matter of how we change, all a matter of how we learn. Um, and this is the matter that we need to be mindful of what task or what journey we are taking on which path are we taking we are suppose we are going north and making sure that we are walking in the northern path not the southern path so that's why buddha was so precise that if you want to gain the happiness in this life and hereafter you have to make sure that you are following the right path the right signpost Otherwise, you will be lost in the wilderness. When you are lost in the wilderness, rather than finding a happiness, you will be lost in your own thoughts and chaos. And rather than helping yourself, uh, not only causing trouble to yourself, but also you are making troubles to others as well. And sometimes that can be terrible for uh, all parties. Okay? So that's why it's based on our action that we act it's based on what we are doing uh, that re in a regular basis defines our happiness of the life and happiness in the future uh, and there are some stories that you know despite knowing the the consequences of that unable to be free such as there was a story i was told that there was a, a man who was a sensible person uh, and then uh, because it was on a, a Saturday night party and he drank a lot uh, drank alcohol and he felt very you know drunk and uh, tomorrow morning when he woke up he felt very sore head and a pain uh, and, and and like that and feel unwe unwell and headaches and like that and he was thinking Oh, this drink is not good. I'm not going to drink it again. But what happened? And a late night again, uh, uh, okay, with a dinner, just one glass of wine. And took a one. Uh, and then another, oh, it's okay, I can bear uh, two. Oh, it's okay, I can bear three. By the time when he realized that he's drunk, he can't even move. So going back into the circle one. Uh, so that's what... It is very important that we know uh, what we are doing and ability to disconnect ourselves from those events and those activities which will help to find happiness um, in the moment, in this life and hereafter. 
So hello, uh, Ankashmeda uh, Sukiho. So with this, I hope that you know, uh, I just uh, would like to convey today's message is that whatever we do, that defines our behavior, our temperament, and our life ahead. So if we want to change our life to the better and happiness, we have to start changing now. And then we need to change not by just the one day, but continue doing it in terms of a psychology, doing it for 21 days and maintaining that continuation that eventually we will get happiness and healthy life, well-being of our body and mind and happy moments. With this, may you all be well and happy. In a few moments time, we're going to have evening chanting and guided meditation. You are most welcome to join with us. Until then, good night and may you all be well and happy. May the Buddha Dhamma Sangha bless you. Satu.